So how do I express my feelings and needs to my partner without them getting defensive or feeling attacked or accusing me of not accepting them? Well, the short answer is you can't. You aren't responsible for their actions or reactions. You aren't responsible for how they show up or don't show up in this relationship. Now, is there anything that we can do to set us up for the best chance to have an emotionally safe discussion where our legitimate feelings and needs are heard? Absolutely. John Gottman calls those soft startups. How we begin those conversations matters a ton. The first minute of that discussion is extremely predictive to whether it's going to be a productive, collaborative, two-sided talk, or whether it's simply going to turn into another missed opportunity for connection and closeness and turn into another fight. We can do our part. Do you know what our part is? We don't blame them for our feelings. We don't criticize them by attacking their character. We don't lead with, hey, you know what I've been thinking recently? What a lazy piece of garbage you are. Even though that's what we feel like saying, isn't it? But that's not a respectful way to speak to our partner. And 99% of the time, it doesn't set us up to be heard or understood. And you know what? It makes sense why we would keep getting louder and louder towards someone we love who is emotionally unavailable. Why we resort to criticism or blame. We're desperate to be seen and heard, we're desperate for them to show up in some way. We're panicking a little inside, and we might even threaten to leave because we're so desperate to get any rise in them, because subconsciously we know if we can get them to fight, it means they still care. The only problem with that style of relationship is it's based in fear, not love or maturity. I'm talking to both of you. How you bring up a complaint about how you're feeling and how you receive concerns and complaints about how your partner is feeling gives us a great window into whether or not you or they are emotionally mature or not. Take it from someone who wasn't. So all we can do is what we should do. If we have a hurt or a complaint or a desire to be loved in a new way, we bring it up. Hey, can I talk to you about something that's important to me? If they say this is a good time, then we simply tell them about this one instance. When you did this or didn't do this, it made me feel why. I'm not blaming you for those feelings. I'm just informing you. Now, is it their job to take responsibility for our feelings? No, but as your partner, as someone who says they love you, it is their job to invite and encourage your feelings and hurts into an emotionally safe environment because that's what you do when you love someone. Telling someone else to bury their feelings and hurts, avoiding conversations that need to be had, dismissing someone else's concerns or desires, punishing their vulnerability, that's not love. That's emotional immaturity and selfishness and it kills relationships every single time. A safe partner will respond to your calm vulnerability with emotional responsiveness. Remember, Sue Johnson says, in couples who divorce, it is not increasing conflict that is the cause. It is decreased affection and emotional responsiveness. That means when you're concerned about something or hurt, they lean in your direction. They give you the benefit of the doubt and they listen. They take what you're saying as information on how you need to be loved in this moment. It's not an attack on them. You're not calling them a failure. You're telling them, this is how I feel close or disconnected from you. And that's very, very valuable information. All we can do is be vulnerable and emotionally mature in how we bring up a concern or a complaint, which is healthy, by the way. How they respond is their choice and it tells you everything you need to know about whether this relationship will ever be safe or mutually fulfilling. Now, does that mean all hope is lost? No. Emily and I were both emotionally immature and hurting each other, but we got help. We learned and now we're better. I mean, she's still crazy, but I'm better. I'm just kidding. That was a joke. We all know I'm the crazy one here. Come on. But it took both of us to say we need to learn how to do better. And if you don't have that, I don't see a lot of growth happening in your relationship.